What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rams Brothers. I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother and the other great host of this show, Nick. And Nick, the Rams are one and three. They got the Packers next weekend at home. But this one was disappointing on so many levels. But first and most importantly, how are you, my good brother? I'm okay. Yeah, it was a really, really bad loss. Not a lot of positive takeaways you can really subtract from that game. You made the Bears look like a really good offense, and they have been one of the worst. So Difficult. They simplified the game plan for Caleb Williams. almost. Finally. Through. Of course, yeah. it's this week that they do it. I was going to say, of course, it's this week. Of course, they're able to run the ball for more than 1.8 yards per pop. DeAndre Swift was the leading receiver and the leading rusher. He was the first player since God knows who. Nobody even recognized that name since 2015 to, to what, 150 yards on the ground and through the air as a running back. Yeah. Um, the red zone play calling was baffling. The Abysmal. defense can't make a stop when they need two Jared versus arm tackles, two worst linebackers that you could possibly ask for on the field at the same time in Troy Reuter and Christian Rose. Boom. It, the, the Ernest Jones trade is such a question mark. Trey White, people want him benched, and, you know, understandably so. It just seems like there's uh, so many issues kind of snowballing out of a game where you thought you had a lot of momentum against the San Francisco 49ers. You really um... – the problem with the with the Rams is it, it feels like they're always having to talk about this Matthew Stafford comeback that they won't shut up about now. It's like, oh, don't give them the ball late. It's like, how about we get to a position where we can control the game, we score early, we're not relying on, you know, our rookie kicker to go out there and hit every single, like, five attempts, four field goal attempts? Like, yeah. he's bound to miss one of those. So I, I And the hold was bad, so you can't even really blame him. But it doesn't matter. You, you have to be able to, you know, put the exclamation point on the drive after you've gotten down there. And multiple times you're getting down there because of Kyron and then three pass plays in a row. Yeah, it's, it's just baffling. And you know that that's exactly what happens before the half. You have an opportunity to get a lead to get the ball back. And there's a 2-2 out well penalty. And then you throw the ball three straight times. Then the Josh Cardi missed field goal occurs. And, you know, you're behind the eight ball the entire game. And play calling is so much more simplified when you have a lead. And Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay have had to do it playing from behind theoretically the whole season, which has yeah. just been – it's been really, really difficult to swallow. And now you're looking at a situation where you could potentially be one in four going into a bye week. And I'm wondering if some of the red zone inefficiencies – because they were what? What were they in, in the red zone? 0 for 4? Over 1 for 4 one in the red four. zone today? Yeah, I mean, it's just – Yeah, maybe even 1 for 5. They were one for four and it's just, just brutal because you had more total plays. You had more total yards. You had more yards per play. You had less penalties. Obviously the turnovers are an issue and you lost the turnover battle two to nothing and you were inefficient in the red zone. And it comes down to a couple of plays when you're on the road that you have to be able to execute. And defensively, it didn't seem like they could do it. They had the one stop from Quinton Lake on the blitz, which was the first sack from a Rams defensive back since 2022 it just seems like they have so much to clean up. Um, and, you know, it's, it's obviously a long season, but one and three trying to look outward and trying to look ahead to your next opponent who looks like they came back against the Minnesota Vikings in a game where that game was, what, 28-0? Yeah. Um, yeah they're going to they, be ready to go. And it just yeah. it makes the whole season more difficult. They're going to be hungry for a win. Uh, we're going to be underdogs next week, as we should be. Uh, I don't think this defensive unit – is ready to go against, um, you know, this Packers team next week. They weren't ready this week. And it's just really tough when you take away, you know, uh, Cooper, uh, Cooper and Puka, both of them, and you're asking people like uh, Johnson and Robinson to make these big plays, and they're not able to do so. And then Stafford is, is you know, on the ground. I wish he felt that pressure because that fumble recovery was kind of the entire game. Because they probably yeah. been more of just like field goal, field goal, like trading off like bad possessions. But that gave the uh, the the Bears the ability to play with the lead and play safe and allow Caleb to really like ease into his role and not turn the ball over. That play, the missed field goal and the two point conversion that they weren't able to convert on a low percentage fade play to Demarcus Robinson in the back corner of the end zone, which I thought was a terrible play call. And that's where it just gets so difficult. And it's like. How do you overcome some of these mistakes? Um, I, I the Montez sweat play specifically, they had Jordan Whittington, and then I think it was Colby Parkinson 
trying to block a player that the Bears traded a second round pick to get uh, you know, a really, really talented edge rusher who I'm sure a lot of other teams would have been interested to, to bring onto their roster. And, you know, he's able to hit Matt Staff in the backfield. He forces a fumble. And the other turnover the Rams had was the one that end the game. And that was also really baffling, too, was the fact that they didn't call the, the hands to the face on the um, – on the late hit on Matthew Stafford to end the game, which yeah. would have put the Rams on the 20 yard line, right? 22 yard line or whatever it was, fresh set of downs, and still a minute to go. And only down. I don't think even with that call, they would have been able to drive down the field. In Probably that not. Probably um, not. No, but you're right. I mean, like and, the. And yeah, the, that's, the, that's just not the call you're going to get on a game winner in, uh, in Chicago. You know what I mean? Like, you can't really be relying on that. Um, yeah, they missed it, but. You can't sit here and be like, oh, if we got that. I'm yeah. not saying that that's what you were doing. I'm just. No, no, no. I know. I know what you're saying. I mean, somebody like Mahomes, though, will get that 10 times out of 10. Yeah. You know, especially in prime time. And this is a one o'clock game in Chicago. Refs decided to keep the flags in their pocket. But, you know, I, I mean, Matthew Stafford was 20 of 29 for 224 yards. I thought Kyron had a really good game again. 19 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown. Seven straight games of Kyron Williams scoring a touchdown, which is great. I mean. You know, they're running the ball a little bit more efficiently. You saw the stretch play. You saw some duo stuff up front. I think schematically, you saw a little bit of 11 personnel or mostly 11 personnel and a little bit of 12 personnel. Um, but the leading receiver was 2-2 out, about four receptions for 82 yards. They're asking Jordan Whittington to do a ton in the Cooper Cup role, which is, I mean, it's a massive, massive responsibility for a first-year player. Tyler Johnson, the one play where Matthew Stafford got hit, I think it was a third down at some yeah. point in the third quarter where he was he, looking up in the sky. Gives up on the ball. Tyler, Tyler Johnson, Johnson just gives up on the ball. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was his only target of the game. And Demarcus Robinson is really like a kind of player that he can stretch the field if other players are able to open up stuff underneath. And they have, those players in the secondary have to account for crossers and have to account for slants and stuff underneath the Cooper Cup and Pukunakua. But Robinson, like, you can't – there's no effect of an X receiver if there's no threat from the Z and from the F. And it just didn't feel like there was – enough of that in this game and you're missing you're missing a lot of personnel you are and the defensive side of the ball is just a whole nother story yeah the defense i i want to talk a little bit about the offense before we just go rushing on the defense just because yeah. there, there was some positives to take away um like you said stafford is still able to to go out there and sling it and, and, and drive them down the field but it's just really sad to be sitting here we have sean mcveigh they have a defensive minded eberflus head coach and the reason we lose this game is the play calling, you know? It's like you got them to the position to score a touchdown and you get to the red zone and then you stall and you keep stalling and they and they never have the ability to take the lead and that's and then you just lose the game. But you, just cuz you can't you can't put that exclamation point. I wonder now cuz our dad's texting us live as we're doing this pod about like potential <laughs> trades and I feel like a lot of it has to do with how they enter the bye. If they get a win next week and they enter the bye two and three, they probably will be hungry on the trading block this year. But if you lose that game and you're one and four, I, I mean, there's there's argument to be made to just be like, we're sitting this season out and we're going to be thinking about next year and who we can bring in next year as opposed to losing, you know, you're one and four. You have to make yeah. a hell of a run just to get back to 500. Yeah, you do. You do. I mean, that's kind of the situation they were in last year when they were three and six coming out of the bye. Um, but it just found like they were able to find a little bit more ment momentum. But I mean, they lost the Cowboys. They lost the Packers with Brett Rippon. And then they went into the bye week three and six. So it felt like that season was totally lost, too. And they were able to win seven of eight down the stretch and get back into the playoffs. It doesn't feel like it's as possible this season because you don't have players like Aaron Donald to be able to close out games. You know, it just makes things more difficult. And when you have Matt Eberflus calling plays and Shane Waldron, who's a Sean McVay disciple, some of these things should be expected, right? I think that's kind of where the, the a lot of the frustration lies. It's like Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron had a really good game plan. Like they finally were able to utilize DeAndre Swift for every single reason why they paid him whatever it was, $22 million. Um, and, and that's really the frustrating part. It's like they simplified the game plan for Caleb Williams they, they really kind of like enabled him to, to take things underneath, to check down the receivers, to not push the ball where he didn't have to, let the defense allow, you know, give him what, whatever they're, they're giving him. Um, and I think that's where the whole situation kind of unfolded, where it's like you can't put pressure on the quarterback. You had, 
next to no sacks. He had limited yeah. pressures. Um, and, you know, it's like you can't get out out coached by Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron. I really – it's last year you have a guy like Aaron Donald and you look past a lot of the stuff on, on defense that – that just goes unnoticed just because you have somebody that can, you know, complete his sacks. Jared Burst needs to go to the school of Aaron Donald of completing sacks and completing these tackles because I, I feel like I've seen him four times already this season where he has the play. He's got somebody either wrapped up or he's like grabbing at their legs and he can't bring them down. And that is the difference in some of these, some of these games because it's like, okay, you stop them there. You take away a touchdown on the board if you're actually able to bring exactly. it down. And it's just uh, – it's really – it's sad to watch a, a defense without Aaron Donald be as abysmal as people thought that it was going to be without him. Because I – Yeah, I mean – I went in hopeful. I thought that the guys that they drafted with uh, Fisk and Verse and, you know, Kobe Turner were going to be able to fill that uh, that Aaron Donald side's hole. And I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the issue. It's like, you, you know, you, you're so dependent on Jared Verse, who's a rookie. But I mean, like you got to be able to make some of those th those mistakes correctable. You have to be able to tackle. You have to be able to execute. You have to be able to finish plays. Braden Fisk had a nice pressure where he generated a forced fumble. The Chicago Bears fell right on top of it. Um, you didn't get a lot from Byron Young today. Uh, Kobe Turner, you know, that's just when when you're not playing next to Aaron Donald, you know, you don't you look a little bit more yeah. human. Yeah. Um, so the front is still young. It's still developing. So a lot of this Chris Shula conversation is like. Based on the personnel that they have, you lost Ernest Jones, you lost Aaron Donald. You know, the secondary isn't all it was cracked up to be just because you got some injuries and Darius Williams and John Johnson. But you paid Trey White, you know, $4.25 million to be able to kind of come in and be a stopgap. And he's allowed a ton of yards throughout this entire season. And the, the mismatch between Christian Roseboom and DJ Moore in the end zone is just inexcusable. So a lot of it is scheme, a lot of it is personnel. But you know, I don't – It's it does kind of feel like it's starting to get to be time to panic about this team. Although it is a long season, there's just so many things that happened today. Next week. That, yeah, next week. But it's it just kind of led you to believe, like, uh, they really got to get this red, stones, red, red zone stuff corrected. They really have to be able to be a little bit more efficient on defense. Um, and they just weren't any of that today. It's what lost them uh, the playoffs last year was the red zone efficiency. And I, I remember they made a big deal about it on the off season, saying how they're going to bring in people. Um, they brought in the like the the guy with some ridiculous yeah. title. Um, yeah, to like stretch. come in. Yeah, stretch. Um, in game and, yeah, so. yeah, like game manager or something like that. I don't know, something something weird to like you know have them be able to make these exclamation points on these drives, and we haven't seen it yet this year. Um, it's, it's really, the, the more I think about it, it's a miracle. We won last week is what it feels like. It's yeah, like, it feels amazing. like it was magic as opposed, because you're going to beat the San Francisco 49ers and you go into Chicago against a really young and struggling team who has nothing on the ground. Let them run all over you. Let the rookie quarterback look like a veteran who can just dink and dunk his way downfield. And that's all he really needed to do. That's all. That's really all they asked him to do. And he was able to do that. And that's why they yeah. really so many screenplays that went for yeah. a ton of yards. He can't. Uh, he has like that the touchdown to DJ Moore. I was shocked he made that 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 pass because he's been airmailing it all season, and that's the one that, that he's De DeAndre to. Swift was the leading receiver by 40, 38 yards. I mean, that's how effective the screen game was against the Rams. Cole Komet three catches for thirty four yards. DJ Moore had three catches for twenty two yards. Keenan Allen in his first game back. Three receptions for 19 yards. Romo Dunze had one catch. Like they, it was all about the running backs in the backfield. They ran the ball efficiently. It was like, okay, it's time to finally game plan a running back. It's time to finally not give him plays that aren't favorable to his skill set. You know, we're going to work him outside of the numbers. We're going to work him outside of the edges. We're going to get him on stretch plays. We're going to get him on outside zone plays. We're going to get him in the screen game and just outran our defense. Yeah. And that's all it was. Looking forward to Green Bay. Just what do you think that line is going to be? Rams plus six and a half might be too high. Maybe mm. like Rams plus four and a half. Yeah, Rams. I'm going to say Rams plus five and a half. Yeah, that sounds about it's, right. It's probably open right now. Let me see. Yeah, if it, check your app. I don't, I, Green Bay is, uh, they're a plucky team. 
now that Jordan Love is like fully back. I'm happy they didn't rest him until we played him, though. You know, that would have been even worse because it, it feels like his first game back, he's going to be. But they're going to be hungry after a loss to a divisional rival. They're going to be hungry. Yeah, that game's not up yet. So I would yeah. think in, in between the range of four and a half and five and a half or so. Yeah, probably um, opens at like six and then gets pushed down to five and a half. Yeah. So very difficult loss. Um, sounds off in the comments. Let's hear what you guys have to say. We, I know you want to bench Trey White. I know that. You're very vocal about that on X. We get it. We know the linebackers suck. But how do you correct this stuff? Right? Like, how do you get better in the red zone? Is it just a matter of giving Kyron Williams the ball more frequently? Is it just a matter of getting some guys healthy on the offensive side of the ball? Getting your full offensive line back? Um, Because Stafford was a little bit banged up towards the end of this game. Also, why are we – I would like to see Blake Corum for, like, a snap if we're going to keep shoving out Rivers. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Why why do we draft him so high if we're not seeing him at all? If you feel like Kyron is the true bell cow – and but then you're going to mix in Rivers and not Blake Corum. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that's the difference in the game, but it's just it, it, I'm just questioning everything now. Yeah, I know. I, I totally agree with you. Um, and you should. I mean, that's what, what you do after a loss is you start to question coaching. You, you question personnel. You question everything, right? Yeah. You question the future outlook of this team. You know, you question if they're going to be able to come to play at home against the Packers next week. Right. Question what they're going to do coming out of the bye. Like it's just the whole thing is a big question mark when you continue to lose. So one and three opportunity to be two and three before the bye week, which I think would make everybody feel a hell of a lot better about this team and the future outlook of it. But it just seems improbable. Yeah, I'll be at that game <laughs> the day before my birthday. I'm going to be there. So who the hell knows what's going to happen? Um, I just. Um, I need to make sure that mentally I don't put all of my uh, capacity on that game. <laughs> it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be hard not to. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you guys as always. Make sure you like and subscribe. Sound off in the comments. Um, as always, make sure to download the Autograph app. Um, punch in our referral code Rams Bros. Uh, And you'll be able to access all the other content creators' information, all of their podcasts, all of their articles. We greatly appreciate it. And ours, obviously ours. And you just get rewarded, essentially, for for being a fan. So just download the Autograph app, punch in our referral code RAMSBROS. You guys can listen to everything you need to listen to within the Autograph app and get rewarded for it. So that's all we got for you guys today. I know it's a a depressing, miserable, miserable, depressing, dumbfounded – disaster, whatever you want to call it. We appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me and Dean talk about it. And yeah, you know, go Rams. Season's not over yet. Even if you go one and four, season's far from over. So just got to keep telling yourself that. Get better, get healthy, and uh, be a good football team. Yes, sir. Only really seen once. Barely. (laughs) Barely. One day at a time. Yeah. One game at a time. We appreciate you guys. Go Rams. Go Rams.